In order to hit a straight shot, the swing must be kept inside so that it can swing through straight toward the hole. This is a virtue which we intend to describe when we say a swing is compact. To slice a hook without the intention of doing so leads to plenty of trouble. But as a player becomes more expert, he ought to know how to turn the ball to right or left at will. Control shots of either kind are very useful in the wind or in swinging around bunkers and other obstructions, barring the way to the green. To play an intentional slice, the more skillful player sets out to do some of the things which the average golfer does without intention. To produce a slice, he must swing his club through on a line directed slightly to the left of the objective. Depending upon how much slice he wants, he moves a little farther back of the ball, opens his stance a bit, and lessens the turn of his hips during the backswing. In swinging through, he holds his weight back a little in order to direct his stroke across the line from the outside. The result is a slice, all right, but it is under control. The hook, which is a result of a faulty swing, is usually caused by turning the face of the club over before impact. But a controlled hook or draw cannot be played in this way. The swing which produces this kind of shot strikes the ball while crossing the line of flight from the inside out with the face of the club approximately square to the objective or only slightly hooded. This is done almost entirely by the action of the hips and body. The ball is played a little nearer the right foot. The wind up of the hips during the backswing is the same as usual, but the forward shift of the hips is exaggerated. The swing drops in close to the body and is directed outward through the ball. See what I mean, Mike? I got you, Bob. And I wish it was tomorrow. Well, see that you don't forget it. Bobby, I want you to tell me something. Joe claims that the reason that I can't hold the green is because I don't put enough backspin on the ball. Now I hit the ball with plenty of elevation, and it goes good and high. But when it lands on the green, it keeps going and going and going and going. Now I claim it's because the greens are too hard. Well, Eddie, those greens were fairly firm, but they would always hold a well-hit shot. Your trouble was that you didn't hit the ball down enough. The average golfer, when he has to play a quick stopping shot, finds it difficult to resist the impulse to hit the ball on the upstroke. He wants to help it into the air. But the stroke which produces backspin is directed downward and takes a divot from a turf after it strikes a ball. The elevation of a shot means little. The ball that is hit upward will fly high, but it will not stop quickly unless the greens are very soft. This shot, though not unusually high, was stopped quickly by the backspin. In playing this kind of shot, the cocking of the wrist is very important. If the wrists are not fully cocked and the angle retained until late in the downswing, a firm downward stroke will be impossible. It is a mistake, though, to think that a backspin shot has to be punched any harder than usual. The rhythm and timing are exactly the same. The descending blow and the loft of the club will take care of the spin. To direct the stroke downward is of equal importance in other situations, especially when playing from very close or downhill lies. These shots, too, the average golfer is inclined to try to hit on the upstroke, to pick them up cleanly. This is the reason he tops so many. Often the brassy can be used with effect from a very close lie, if the player only has courage enough to go for it. A slightly descending blow, skinning the turf in front of the ball, imparts a spin which makes the ball rise. Of course, when the lie is perceptibly downhill or hanging, a more lofted club may be necessary. This lie was fairly steep, but a good downward smash with a spoon got the ball up enough to clear a fair-sized tree less than 150 yards away. Even these wood club shots come up with backspin when they are hit down. Obviously, this is responsible for some loss of distance. When the ball is lying well and the maximum length is required, the brassy shot is played exactly like a drive from the tee. Now, see if you can remember it. Say, I've got it. Thanks, Bob. And I'm going right out of the end of the observation train and try it. You'll get plenty of roll out there, Eddie. If you have seen all six of the pictures of this series, How to Break 90, 
you are now acquainted with all the essential movements of the correct swing. But the acquaintance cannot ripen into intimate friendship unless you do some work for yourself. Do not be ashamed to take your golf a little bit seriously. You don't have to be a crab or a crank in order to make a real effort to improve your game. Golf is so much more fun when it is played well. I am a firm believer in the value of professional instruction, not only for beginners, but also for better players, periodically when things go wrong. The main thing is to make certain that the instructor is a competent professional and not some impractical theorist. It will always be that some instructors will be better than others, but you can at least make sure that your teacher is entitled to call himself a professional golfer and is acquainted with sound methods of playing and teaching. Please remember that nothing shown in these pictures is intended to be a tip or a quick remedy. If your swing is not right, overhaul it completely. Build it on a sound foundation. My aim is not to take a few average golfers out of their class, but to make the average of the whole somewhat better.